Now this is an unusual sight. This is a genuine piece of this server's prehistory because this is Ollie's base and Ollie was on this server and had killed the dragon seemingly before the rest of us and has built the server's first mega base. Now this is kind of a conundrum for me because I think he's probably going to come back and he's going to tear this thing down. He's going to build some kind of massive like for real construction. But I think the server's first mega base really deserves preserving. If that makes sense. And what's he got in here? He's got a double bed. He's got a bunch of resources. I mean, look, at he's got so many ender pearls. How did he do all of this? Right? Like an actual speed run. This is kind of incredible stuff. He's even got some ancient debris in here. I'm like, dude, this guy really, really went for it. I basically see it as my duty as a historian at this point to make sure that this base survives. Given that it was the first thing that was built on the server, that makes perfect sense to me. I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit it all into this bundle, but um, I brought a couple of shulker boxes. I've taken a bunch of screenshots so we can make an accurate historical record of what was in each of these chests. There's 29 coal in this furnace. We'll need to record that. And then I'm going to pack everything into these shulker boxes and try and reproduce everything in its entirety at a place where it can be preserved for all time. And then I just need to quickly make a wooden axe, making a quick selection using my holographic imaging tool. And this build can take up its rightful place, preserved forever as part of the server's history. And with it all safely secured in my ender chest, I better make my way out of here before the locals catch me. This bridge and I have unfinished business, <laughs> as you can probably tell from the fact that there is still a massive hole on this side with nothing much going on. And I've been debating what to do about this for a little while. I was thinking about just doing a straight ramp down there, but I don't know if I like the shape of that, to be quite honest. But it needs something here. The bridge needs to feel complete. It's felt incomplete for a while. I still need to do a little bit of work around here. I've got to finish off the bases of some of the pillars out there in the lake. And I want to do a bit of stuff around the outside of the lake here to kind of you know, work on the history of this lake in general, but there's so much history and so little time <laughs> in, in a, an odd sort of way. So what I think we're at least going to do here to start off with is take care of this second ramp to the bridge. And frankly, we're just going to mirror the first one. I like the design of this enough. We're not going to do the fountain on this side, but I like the design on this side enough that we're probably just going to mirror it on the opposite side here, giving this almost like three pronged trident like look to the bridge as it approaches the gatehouse over here. The good news is I still have my schematic here for the Great Bridge approach, the uh, on-ramp <laughs> as I've been thinking of it. And the coolest part is with the free cam mod, I can even get up here and position it like so. <laughs> I'm sort of playing like a sim game at this point. It's kind of like playing, I don't know, Stardew Valley or Age of Empires trying to figure out exactly where this stuff goes. But this is one of the tools I've been using first to design the orchard over there with the frog lights, but also to make sure that stuff like this gets into position nice and easily. So with a couple more clicks that way and one or two more this way, there we go. Our new approach ramp, our second on ramp is all lined up. And this terrain over here has kind of intersected the ramp. So I kind of like the idea actually that the terrain has shifted over time and without people to clear the dirt and stuff off, there's a landslide or something has come over the top of the bridge here. So that's going to work out pretty well. It will make it look significantly different from the other side where I have cut away the terrain there in order to make room for it. I think we need to at least get this taken care of before we do anything else today. So as always, back in my own body here, I think we're going to do this in the form of a time lapse.
Hello, stranger. Hello. Hello. You, Hi. you scared me a little bit. Hi. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, arriving on a six foot dodo will do that <laughs> occasionally. Y yes, I didn't know you had a dodo. Um, I guess. This is Winchester. <laughs> uh, he doesn't bite. Don't worry. He's he's very friendly. Okay. <laughs> he he is uh, quite a bit bigger than me, so you know. A little... <laughs> A little scary. <laughs> they, you, you get used to them. I've been breeding some smaller ones, but they have um, they have a couple of minor issues. Anyway, um, as long as he doesn't <laughs> okay, as long as he doesn't decide to jump off the side of the bridge here, uh, I think we'll be good. So um, yeah, you're, you're stocking the balloon. You're you're, you're getting some iron. I am. In. That's yes. And oh, also come have a look. Guess what else is here too? Oh, books. Are you selling books? I I am. Yeah, they're in the shocker box still right now. But yes, uh, books and iron. Amazing. And now I, stocked. I am so in need of mending books. You have no idea. My <laughs> my shovel and my sword are both kind of on their last legs right now. So if you've got some mending yeah, books... Yeah, that. Um, yeah, in that one. I'm sure you can find some in there if you, <sighs> you're interested. Yes. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Um, right. I, I trade frog lights, mostly. Are you interested in frog lights? I, I mean, I haven't used one yet, but I, I would be... I'd, yeah, I'd be up for that. Excellent. Um, if I can get three mending books off you, I can give you maybe a stack of each and you can figure out which ones you like the best. And that maybe would, we can... Yeah, that would be fantastic. Yes. If you want to come over to the... Uh, I've got a frog light farm over over here well kind of an orchard more than a farm but if you want to if you want to stop by i can <laughs> i can show you the setup yes yes uh let me grab oh you got you grab the book sweet okay yes Guess uh, i'll follow you yeah sorry i'm i'm <laughs> <laughs> gonna be speeding ahead but it's uh, just up here on the on the left <laughs> you've got wings of your own which is more than this dodo has so maybe you can keep up i yeah i mean i have wings but then i feel like i'm just gonna fly on past you pretty quickly oh uh, well <laughs> i don't know winchester's got a decent turn of speed i'll, I'll catch up oh you but... know what yeah dang okay so Welcome to the ancient capital. Um, this isn't exactly my empire, more that I'm rebuilding one from the past. So this is okay. Th this is not none of this really. I, I don't really know what's going on here, to be quite honest with you. I'm just kind of <laughs> rebuilding stuff where I where I see it. But over you, here, you and me both then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, over here is the frog light orchard because frog light farms have to be set up in the nether and the nether's a whole pain and all i figured you know why uh -huh. not why not start growing them here in the overworld so i've got a little bit of a farming setup going on and Ooh. uh if we hop on down here it's probably safe to float down i well, might i was gonna say i might is, leave winchester is, up here <laughs> yeah <it> was, <laughs> i was gonna say is he gonna just fall down oh, and i forgot no, I, you're gonna fall down. I didn't put my elytra on before i did that that's my my <laughs> bad my bad it's it's all good Luckily, I, d I don't need feather falling books. All I need is mending and probably need mending for my legs now as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of that, I actually don't have uh, feather falling on either, but it's something I need to get pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good good plan. At least you've got the uh, the resources to get the books together and all. Yes, yes, um, for sure. Ooh. So so this is where the rest of the dodos are hanging out. The smaller one, um, <laughs> I've invented a hover bird because <laughs> I, I think he's still keeping his legs hidden until he's grown up a little bit. So, yeah, um, yeah, maybe. They're, they're, maybe. Free they're freaking out right now because I'm holding golden carrots. Um, <laughs> aside from the Ooh. frog legs, their favorite food. Uh, so mm. in here, I have a stack of each type of frog light, which I can hand over to you. Ooh. And uh, very you, nice. you can get you. some juicy achievements <laughs> as well. Yeah, some very loud achievements. Yes. Beautiful. Um, so if you want to if you want to dabble with a few of those, see what you like, see what you want to build with. And uh, there is plenty more where that came from. So if you're interested in any of them in future, I can absolutely hook you up. Great. I will definitely be back. And the orchard look lovely. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I've got, there's one tree at the back there that I'm tempted to just leave as a stump because I didn't have enough resources to build the rest of the tree. <laughs> but uh, yeah. It I'm, just hasn't grown yet. It's fine. It's yeah, fine. exactly. I'm, I'm, one day. I'm growing it up from a seedling. And this whole thing is yeah. going to end up being more overgrown and everything anyway, because the idea is it's been abandoned for a while. So I'm mm -hmm. kind of tending to it, but in like a nature documentary kind of way where I don't interfere too much. <laughs> Well, it looks great so far. So, yeah, I look forward to seeing how it develops, I yeah, guess, then. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. And I shall have to pay you a visit at some point because uh, the iron, the books, it's got me all very intrigued about what you're what you're building over there on the other side of the bridge. Yeah, yeah. Well, I yeah, haven't started just yet properly, but yeah, I'm not too far from you. So all right. you're welcome to visit any time, I guess. <laughs> thank you. I'll, I'll make my way over sometime. But uh, I'll catch you later. Best of luck. Oh, my goodness. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> I've basically been waiting to meet False so that I could get hold of some more mending stuff on my gear. I got mending from Villager Trading a little while ago, but I also just wanted an excuse to go and see False, and I think I'm going to be making good use of that bookshop from now on. So we need to mend the leggings. Oh, finally. That's so good. This is going to cost me so many levels, though. The Silk Touch Shovel needs a lot of levels, but this sword 
is on 168 durability, which I don't normally let it get to. Finally. All right. Well, I need to go and pay a visit to an XP farm somewhere or maybe trade with some more villagers, get my levels back up, and then we can enchant that shovel and have no more worries about that. And so we return to what I got up to at the beginning of this episode. We need to rebuild Ollie's mega base at my museum, the perfect place to preserve it for all time. And I have preserved all of the materials that were used in Ollie's mega base and all of the stuff that he had in those chests in my shulker boxes down there for actually quite a while. You know how long it takes Ollie to make an episode, <laughs> but basically I've been keeping this in storage and now I think is the perfect time to unveil my new exhibit, which actually fits really well into the space I had left here in the museum. You see, we've got the schematic all rendered in already and it fits perfectly amongst my other exhibits. A genuine bona fide Minecraft megabase here in my museum in the ancient capital. What an honor. And of course the floor around it was sand because it was on a beach, so I might actually come back in and beachify some of the rest of this, but this box right here is all of the materials that he used to build this base, and we are going to reconstruct them with painstaking precision, which I'll be quite honest, did not take very long at all, but we do still need to get the signs in here as well, so let's pop those in here. Ah, perfect, perfect. That is everything for the outside, at least. And of course, on the inside, yeah, I did end up taking the schematic after I'd just turned all of the chests into shulker boxes, but I took screenshots, remember? So we have absolutely everything of the interior inventory all figured out as well. And so it is with pinpoint accuracy that we're able to recreate Ollie's entire inventory of weird stuff like kelp and orange beds. And it is my belief that through recreating these in their exact formations, we can maybe get an insight into the mind of why somebody would put four ink sacks there in this chest otherwise full of wool and one pink dye. The chest to the right of the crafting table equally mysterious in its use of three eggs in this slot here and two eggs in that slot there with the mangrove popagule nested in between. Can we truly understand the mind of a man who would put one furnace here and yet one furnace here with three candles on top of it even though there's a torch there and furnaces emit light? Having recreated them in all their glory, can we ever truly understand why he chose to put these two blocks of wool here and not over here on the opposite side of the room with the other wool? Perhaps some of these mysteries will remain forever unanswered, but here we are. <laughs> surrounded by a perfect recreation of Ollie's mega base at its height. And finally, I can reuse these seven shulker boxes for something. I shall have to start charging admission <laughs> for this. And yes, I know what some of you lot are going to say. You've probably already left the comments by now, but at this point in the video, if you left a comment saying, oh, this is probably kind of like stealing, which is something that the British Museum and other museums across the world have done for ages, stealing from the indigenous people of a certain area whilst not really giving any regard to th their repossession of artifacts that belong to original cultures and that that's a really bad thing that people should absolutely be making reparations for, then you know what, yeah, you're probably right. But to be honest, <laughs> look at what Ollie made in the meantime. He's made a fantastic mega base of his own, which really is deserving of the title of a mega base. He's got this fantastic build. Go and watch his latest video. There's only two of them. It'll be take you a split second to catch up on his on his episodes. But uh, yeah, I think honestly, we did him a favor by removing this thing. And if he wants his chests back, well, to be honest, he can come and get them, can't he? So there's one last thing I wanted to do in this episode. Once I've dropped off all of these shulker boxes in a place where I'm probably going to forget about them, and once I've cleaned up all of the eggs off of the side of this mountain because the chickens up here are an absolute menace and keep leaving eggs everywhere, and I think that might even be... I mean, it's probably not part of the reason why I'm getting lag problems these days, but I did get a really weird lag spike from the server about half an hour ago, so I kind of want to make sure that these chickens aren't the cause of it. And to be honest, I don't know if 13 eggs is really going to have caused that, but you never know. But anyway, I wanted to show you some of the stuff that's been happening on the Great Bridge, and I'm not going to look at this one too closely because I don't know if it's been shown in a video yet. But it's pretty obviously Pirate Joe's statue, so go and check out Joey's videos when you've got a second. But this one I'm pretty sure has been shown in a video now. This is Flip's Goblin statue, and of course... <laughs> 
Of course, he's got Wither Roses on one side of it. But look at this. Goblin Pork. Hungry? Have a free snack. Goblin Pork. Yes. Amazing. I would... Oh, and there's... Okay, there's copper in here. I, I feel like that's probably false trading for some of it, right? That's got to be... That's got to be a false thing. Okay. Well, I guess I'll probably have to trade some frog lights. Did I leave any frog lights in here? Did I leave any in my ender chest? No, doesn't look like I have. Okay, well, I'll have to go and pick up some of those again. Okay, what is this? This looks like a Lizzie build to me. There's amethyst and stuff around. And clearly she's left a couple of boats around here, so maybe she should tidy up after herself. I wonder what's going on here. I really need to get rid of these eggs, so I'm just gonna throw them at whatever this is. And it looks like none of them hatched either, which is good, so we won't have any more chickens just laying eggs everywhere, except... Do I, do I still hear one? Somebody's doing something weird, and they're probably in the middle of setting it up, so I'm not going to worry about it too much for now. Anyway, that's where we're going to wrap up this episode of Empires. I've got a lot of building to do. I've got a bunch of stuff that I want to build, especially some stuff that I'm going to be working on off camera for a couple of people. So sorry the videos have been few and far between, but trust me, you're going to like what's coming next. But from me, Winchester, and this statue of the angel of life and death that watches over us all, thank you so much for watching this episode of Empires. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.